but I'm going to be reviewing the Unit 5A quiz practice. This is the quiz you're going to see on Friday. Total of 10 questions, so I'm going to review each one to help you review for this quiz. So the first question is going to ask you essentially, you know, questions about like terms, coefficients, factors, and constants. So I'm just going to point out what those things are when you're given an expression. So for example, here we have 5e and 4 are like terms. Like terms, the only thing you need to look for are two things. They need to either have the same variables, like for example, 5x and 3x. These are like terms because they have identical variables. But if I have something like 5x and 3x squared, these are not like terms because this exponent 2, this does not have an exponent. This is really just an exponent of 1. So everything has to be identical in terms of the variables, including the exponents. If they're not, then it's not like terms. If they're identical with the variables and exponents, they are like terms. And then the other types of like terms you could have are called constants, meaning they're just numbers without variables. So 4 and 6, none of these have variables. These are like terms, and we actually call these constants. So you can see here, 4 is a constant. When I look here, 4 is a constant. There's no variable, so I would make that one of my choices here as correct. That is true. Then I see here, 5 is a coefficient. Anytime you have variables, the number associated with that variable is your coefficient. So the coefficient for this here is 5. The coefficient for this term is 9. So when they say 5 is the coefficient, that is correct because 5 is the coefficient of 5v. And then going back to like terms, I forgot the answers, but this one I do not choose because this has a v, this does not. Therefore, they're not like terms. Here, it just wants to know if this is written as a product. Product means we're multiplying, but in this case, we're not multiplying these three terms. We're adding them. So this is not true, so I don't select that one. And in this one, you can see that it says it's written as a sum. Sum means addition. These are written as addition. Therefore, this would be one of my choices. All right, let's move on to question number two, which is evaluating. So we have an expression with variables, and they want you to replace each of these variables with numbers. So what I ended up doing is I copied the problem, and you can see here I swapped out the B and the A with the given numbers. They want 4 to replace A and 7 to replace B. So I did that. B is replaced with 7, and where there's an A, I replace it with a 4. And remember, if you see something like this, 2A, that really means we're multiplying them together. So you could put that little multiplication sign as a reminder. So you can see we're actually doing 2 times 4. Because the common mistake I see is people put this as 24, but it's not 24. It's 2 times 4. And now we're going to follow the order of operations independent of each other. So we'll do the order of operations to the top and to the bottom separately. And don't forget, PEMDAS is what we're going to use. First thing we look for is parentheses. There are no parentheses, so we can skip that step. I look for exponents next. I do have an exponent up here, so 7 squared. Remember, 7 squared actually means 7 times 7, which gives me 49. And then I'm going to copy the rest of the problem. 7 plus 2 times 4 in my denominator. And then I just keep following the order of operations. So on the top, I only have one thing left to do, which is subtract. And on the bottom, I have addition and multiplication. Between these two, we multiply before we add. So you can see here, multiplication is before addition. So on the bottom, I'm going to have 7 plus 8. On the top, like I said, all we have left to do is subtract. So that's easily going to be just 45. And then the last thing to do on the bottom is just add. So we're going to get 45 over 15. And then if possible, divide this out. And you can see here, when I divide this out, I do get 3 is my final answer. All right, we're on question number 3, which is evaluating this quadratic expression. So notice that in this one, they want us to evaluate this when n is equal to 5. So I went ahead and did some of the steps ahead here. So just a couple things to point out. Don't forget, when you see a number like this, 7n, a term that says 7n, that means 7 times n. So you're multiplying these two together. And what you want to first do is substitute your n with the number they gave you. So since they said let n equal 5, then everywhere I see an n, I replace it with the number 5. And as a side note, don't forget, n squared means n times n. It does not mean 2 times n. That's a common mistake, so be careful. This does not mean to multiply 2 with n. This means to multiply n with another n. In other words, in this case, since n squared is 5 squared, 5 squared means we're doing 5 times 5, which is 25. It does not mean 5 times 2, which is equal to 10. So if you do this mistake, you're going to get it wrong. Be careful with that. So going back to the problem, you can see we have an exponent, addition, multiplication, addition. So if you go back to order of operations, 
the first thing we're going to do here is exponents because there's no parentheses exponents is next so it means 5 squared which is 25 and i copied the rest of the problem as is and then i look at my order of operations and figure out what's after exponents multiplying and dividing so i have addition multiplying addition so that means this part right here is next so i would get 25 plus 35 plus 8 and then the only thing left to do is add so i'll just add all these together so when you add these all up you get a total of 68 and that's the final answer all right, question number four now is applying the distributive property. This one involves a fraction. So make sure you practice multiplica multiplication of fractions with whole numbers if you struggle with this because, again, distributive property does not change. We're going to take the 9 and multiply it with the first term and the second term. So the most work here is going to be just multiplying the fraction with the whole number. And what I usually do to organize my work is I'll copy the problem. And instead of multiplying this out over here underneath, I do the work on the side because there are some steps involved. And you can see here, 9 times 2 thirds. First thing I do is make the 9 into a fraction by putting it over 1, right? Because 9 divided by 1 is still equal to 9. So I'm not changing the value. I'm just representing it as a fraction. And anytime you multiply fractions, you want to make sure your, your final answer is simplified. So what you want to do is break apart the, fact, the 9 into its prime factors. So 9 is the same thing as 3 times 3. And I can see here now, I look for common factors between the numerator and my denominator. And I can see we have... 3 is in common as a common factor, so I eliminated those 3s, and whatever is left, after you eliminate all common factors, just multiply it back. So here we have 3 times 2, which is 6. I only have a 1 left in my denominator, so 1 is my denominator, and then 6 divided by 1 is 6. So now I know that 9 times 2 thirds is equal to 6. So again, going back to this problem, I can see we have to multiply this together, 9 times 2 thirds, and we also have to multiply 9 times 3x. So that's the work I'm showing you here. We just did this work, and that came out to be 6. Bring down my minus sign, and then 9 times 3x gives me 27x. And that will be my final answer. Again, this is an expression. You don't have to solve anything. You just distribute, and then you're done. All right, now we are on question number 5, which is translating phrases. So here it says, 8 more than twice Garan's age. In order to translate this one, anytime I want to get 8 more than something, that means I'm going to translate this part first. So twice Garan's age. Twice means that we're doing two times something. In this case, two times Garan's age. And we're going to use G to represent Garan's age. So twice Garan's age would be two times G. So let me just write it down here just to organize it. Two times G. And then how do I get eight more than t that amount? So to get eight more, you just got to add eight to that amount. And here's another question similar to that one. Instead of 8 more, it's 8 less than twice Garan's age. So similarly, in this case, I ought to put 2 times G. And if I want to get 8 less than something, you just subtract 8 after the fact. So with this one, be very careful because the order is reversed. And then let me just do a couple more examples just so you can see some other ones you might see in this, in this problem. 1 less than the product of 18 in a number. So the product means we are multiplying so we're multiplying in this case 18 and a number and it says here they want you to use n for the unknown number so this will be my n so product we're multiplying 18 and n so it'll be 18 times n so the product of 18 and n and then now we want to get one less than that we just that we just translated so to get one less than that you subtract one from that and then here's the last example before we move on to the next problem. 67 decreased, decreased means we're subtracting, by twice the number. So twice we said it means two times. And the a number part, in this case, it says let n be the unknown number, so 2n. So this would be 67 decreased by twice a number. 